Welcome to Still Plays Galaxy of Heroes. This is a list on the current single Shard Drop Farms. We first did this list about six months ago, and this is going to be a returning list where on that timetable we will be evaluating how we break down the farming priority of those recent marquees. These are the characters who are now currently or will soon be single Shard Drop Farms. What we are doing with this list is looking at farming priority, not character quality. So their placement on this list is not a reflection of what I think of them as a character. It's a reflection of how quickly I would go after additional stars on these characters. It's also not considering prerequisite status. So it's not looking at Star Killer, Lord Vader, or Jedi Master Kenobi relationships in their placement. One of the themes this time around is that a lot of these characters are viable at gear 11 and three stars. So if you're a free to play player, that is something I would be looking to exploit is getting these characters to a usable level sooner than later. Because this is one of the bigger advantages that I demonstrate on this channel is how building out broad and how going after gear 11 lets you do that quickly and start exploiting some weaknesses in a shallower roster in your opponents. I'm also recording this video the day of Iden Verso's Marquis, so her status is not going to be looked at on this list. We'll get to her next time around, but the early going, she looks to be a character that's going to be viable at those lower stars as well. Rounding out the bottom is Omega. She is not as bad as the popular opinion. She helps the Bad Batch, but she is the most expendable. She has a heal, more damage, but she doesn't change the ceiling or raise the floor for the Bad Batch, and that's the big problem to her and why she's deprioritized as a farm, because you can get by with just Tech, Echo, Hunter, and Wrecker. And one of the reasons she's deprioritized on this list is because she's a fleet farm. Unlike the other characters on this list, she's not going to be competing with as many priorities, which is going to make it a lot easier to pa farm her passively in the background, which is just not true with most of the other characters here. Next up is Darth Talon, a character I'm more bullish on than others, but I've got a Sith bias. Talon is hurt because her Omicron is probably mandatory, it needs to be tested more, but right now it does not look to be an important one to be getting right now. She's boosted on this list because with her ability Sith Cruelty, she shares stats. She's also an attacker, so stars are going to be more important for her in order to do the damage. But she's hurt again because... Her presence on a Darth Treya squad right now doesn't look to be altering the kinds of teams that Darth Treya can counter. And that might change with the Omicron, but we don't have enough information in game right now to make that determination, at least confidently. One of the clues I am going to be looking out for, though, is what node she becomes farmable on. Because that is a clue from CG that helps suggest how CG sees the ceiling of a character. The more expensive a node, the harder that node is to farm, usually that is a more desirable character. So if Talon ends up being on a 12 or 16 energy node, probably a sign that she's a lesser importance character. Up next, Bo-Katan. She also shares stats like Darth Talon, which is a characteristic I look for in teams because it makes existing characters much better by boosting that stat pool. With the Mandalorians, however, Maul is by far the better lead. But if you don't have Maul, Bo-Katan is semi-serviceable. The bigger problem is Mandalorians are a complete pain to gear as a faction in general. So working on Bo-Katan, farming her you're not getting all that much of a benefit in terms of how much you put in and what you're really getting out. And then the other issue is once you do get Maul, Bo-Katan is not really one of the more important characters to be pairing with Maul. You're going to be better off with Beskar, Mando, Candorus, or Django. Bo-Katan is still good and serviceable on that 
squad, but she's not one of the priorities and is not going to be one of the reasons you're winning or losing while you're playing with it. Up next is Dash Rendar. Dash is a great character. The only reason he's this far down on the list is because you can kind of leave him at 3 stars, gear 11, and completely use him. I'm a 7 million GP player. I was using him Grand Arena on defense and getting holds with him regularly. That's without the Omicron and for a couple weeks without the Zeta. And he was still doing that kind of work. If you're free to play, I would take Dash and add him to your bench depth. He's not that bad of a gear for newer characters. The reason he's getting penalized is because a lot of players don't have a smuggler squad, in particular Vandor Chewbacca, readily available. So getting a functional Dash squad may be a little bit more work for most players. Although you can get one up and going without too much effort. They're not a particularly hard faction to gear. Next, we've got Tech, the second of the Bad Batch on this list. Tech is further down on this list because the Bad Batch are already good at three stars in gear 11. If you put in that investment, even though they're a pain to gear, what you get in return is a squad that can handle lower relic Grievous teams, can handle those Galactic Legend prerequisite filler squads that you see on defense all the time that you shouldn't be using. And they are going to be able to do that at those lower star counts. What you get with the higher stars is more survivability and they can start beating some of those higher Relic Grievous squads, start beating some of those Padme teams. They become better, but that doesn't mean you can't be using them in the meantime or even delaying some of these characters. Tech is in this position because Tech is a character that can die off and you can still win. At number 7 is Kyle Katarn, the biggest question mark on this list. I had to penalize him a little bit because Iden Verso was released today, but the testing is all very new and the testing is on these release days is always at the end use scenario so it's difficult to know where these intermediary usages of these characters can be evaluated but kyle katarn is still a good character at three stars in gear 11. he is already good and usable i was using him in grand arena and getting defense with my mon mothma squad but as an attacker, Katarn is going to benefit a ton from those additional stars. He is a worthy relic. Had Verso not been released today, I probably would have had him higher on this list. And we are still waiting to see what node he is going to become farmable on. Verso just changes uh, what the ceiling of that Mon Mothma squad might end up being. And it raises questions about whether Katarn might have better uses on a Jedi team. We'll see what the future of the game has for us. Mara Jade at number 6. And the theme for this list are just characters who are viable at 3 stars, gear 11. Mara Jade is already awesome at those levels. And I would encourage any player, especially free-to-play players, to add her to your depth. And like Katarn, how she's an attacker, she's going to be benefiting a ton from those additional stars, just scaling up the amount of damage that she's going to be doing and raising the ceiling on the types of squads that she and Palpatine can be countering. Like Katarn, we don't know the node she's going to be farmable on, but that is not going to alter my perception of how I'm going to be prioritizing her farm. Hunter, the next of the Bad Batch, as an attacker, he is going to benefit a lot more than Tech as a support character with those additional stars. It'll be just boosting up the amount of damage. So one of the themes within this list is attackers get a benefit from having those additional stars. But the Bad Batch don't rely on damage to beat teams, which is why Hunter is lower down on the list than the finalists in the other two Bad Batch characters. I could be wrong on this placement. We are about five or so days from the end of Conquest and players being able to test Fennec with Boba Fett, Scion of Django. But I think it is a safe bet that CG intends 
for those characters to have a powerful synergy and to be a very desirable squad. Unlike most of the characters on this list, Fennec is not viable at lower stars. At three stars, gear 11, I got very little use out of. At five stars is where I started finding that she was contributing to a Beskar Mando squad. She seems to be a character that is intended to unlock her potential at relics. So getting her farm done so that you can pair her with Scion Boba and Beskar Mando is going to be pretty important. Her dynamic as an undersized squad leader that gets stronger with the smaller squad that she is paired with, that is something that is not worth the risk at those lower star counts. In my testing, it was only successful against the weakest of squads where you're usually not going to see those types of squads, especially now in Grand Arena 2.0. Those were squads I was beating in the pre-GAC 2.0 days. Her full, her full potential is going to be unlocked at seven stars and relics, which increases her priority for me as a character to farm up and gear up. At number three, we have Echo. Echo is the linchpin of a Bad Batch squad, and that is because of his unique one that survives. And that is a Zeta that applies damage every time a debuff is inflicted. So that's just creating a bunch of passive damage on the opponent. And as long as Echo is alive, a Bad Bat squad can still win, which is why he is at this point on this list, because his stars are going to add to his survivability, which is going to add to the success of a Bad Bat squad. Hunter can die off, Omega can die off, Tech can die off, and a Bad Bat squad can still win as long as Echo is still standing. He's on a tough node and he's a tough gear, but the Bad Batch are well worth the investment. And Echo in particular is a high priority farm because of how important he is to making that squad work. But even though Echo is the most important Bad Batch member, Wrecker I have at number two because Wrecker's survivability is the entire squad's survivability. He's got a heal, he's going to be tanking those hits, and his AoE attack Wrecking Ball is going to be putting out a bunch of debuffs, stuns in particular, that are going to control the field and help add a bunch of damage that Echo's unique is going to be exploiting. By having him at more stars, you don't have to worry about the stars on the rest of the squad. He's probably the worst character to gear in the game, at least non-Galactic Legend character to gear in the game, but the Bad Bad Squad I think are well worth the investment. And the number one on the list is the Dark Trooper. Dark Trooper is pretty close to a must-have relic, one that I am working on right now. At 7 stars, gear 11, he is usable. He's pretty good, but you can't unlock his full potential until you have him at full stars. At gear 12 or higher, really, at relics, that's when Dark Trooper becomes a terrifying force. He should be a high priority farm, and because he's on a cheap node, you can actually get him pretty quick, especially if you are a new account player. Building out a Imperial Trooper squad should be a top priority. Dark Trooper, outside of my Galactic Legend projects, is probably my next relic, and he's definitely my most wanted relic right now. This gimmick will return in six months. My next video will probably be another gimmick idea that I started last quarter. Thank you for watching. Be safe out there, everyone, and be excellent to each other. This is Still Plays Galaxy of Heroes.